So here's a molecule, bromo-alcohol. It's got two chiral centers. I expect to be able to draw four stereoisomers. And I need to draw them. I need to draw them quickly. I need to figure out which ones are the antimers of one another. I need to assign an RMS. I need to get all of that done. <clears throat> so the easiest thing to do is to assign the molecule when it's oriented in a way that you find easy and comfortable to assign. Um, and so this molecule, I actually didn't quite draw it the easiest way I could have. So I'm going to redraw it. And my redrawing, I'm going to use that rotation rule. It was a few slides back. I'm going to keep the bromo end of the molecule constant. I'm going to rotate the other groups. The reason I'm doing that is I want the hydrogen to be back. Because I'd like to be able to assign an R and S the simplest possible way. give things priorities. And so my priorities are that the bromo is clearly highest, the hydrogen is low. <clears throat> the rest of the molecule is, meet, is the second priority. And the methyl group is three. The rest of the, the, rest of the molecule is priority two because in that shell, got the oxygen and the carbon rather than just three hydrogens. So if I do this, I can do it once. I can go through, I can go from one to two to three clockwise and find that this carbon is off. And that one's relatively easy to assign. So one to two to three, it's R, low priority group, hydrogen's back. Um, for the other stereo center, the hydroxy group's one, the hydrogen is four, the rest of the molecule is two, and the hydrogen is, or the methyl group is three. So this one is going to go counterclockwise and is S. I'm not going to put numbers on it because it's a little bit too complicated to look at. So now, if I want to just draw stereoisomers, I can take and simply draw a set of structures that are all arranged the same way as the original structure. And I can recognize if I switch two groups at any chiral center, I get the opposite. So I'm going to take and just decide that to make life easy here, I'm going to put the hydroxyl groups and the methyl groups, uh, the, the one methyl group that was in the plane in the same place. So I'm just leaving part of the molecule static. You don't have to do this, but it gets it drawn out relatively quickly. And then if I want to draw different stereoisomers, I can take and, for instance, I can switch the bromine and the hydrogen. That has a local effect. It switches that carbon from what it originally was to the opposite. Stereochemistry. So it was R, so I've drawn S. I didn't go through and figure priorities and draw arrows again. I know if I switch two groups one time, I get the opposite. I could also do the same thing here. I could switch two groups 
the methyl and the hydrogen, and that has the local effect at the hydroxy bearing carbon of switching it from what it was to the opposite. I switch the stereochemistry to all the chiral centers, and so these two are enantiomers. If I want to get the other two, I just take a different subset of choices. So let's say I leave the first one the same. It was Br and hydrogen. It was R before. I haven't changed it, so I just leave it as it is. But let's say I only switch the other side of the molecule. Okay. So I've switched the original S. I've switched the hydrogen and the methyl group, so it's going to be R. That's going to be a diastereomer of the original one. It's the RR version. The enantiomer of the RR will be SS. So whether I copy them down from earlier structures or just switch the two around, centers. Um, so the first structure, RS, second structure, SR. Top structure has specific rotation of minus 32 degrees. What's the specific rotation for the next one? Top one is minus 32 degrees. plus 32 degrees is the other one. Equal but opposite. Because they're enantiomers. One rotates plane polarized light one direction, the other the opposite, but equal amounts. What do you know about, if I tell you it's minus 32 degrees for the first one, what do you know about the third one? Nothing. Okay, they're diastereomers. You don't really know how that's going to, how the rotation's going to change. You, what you do know is that this third molecule is chiral, and it should rotate plane polarized light somehow. You just don't know how. But if you knew the third one, then you'd know the fourth one was equal and opposite, because it's the enantiomer. 